Andrew, welcome to the Power Kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I can see it's a lovely sunny day for you, just as it is for me. I know we're only a stone's throw away from each other, but of course, here we are via a Zoom call. It's a pleasure for me to spend this moment in time with you because what I feel you do is tremendous for people of any color, creed, background, and that is the art of speaking. And I really love talking. I really love learning. And I'm hopefully, you know, other, other people who are listening to this today will also enjoy your wisdom. Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for coming into space and, and inviting me so we can have this uh, chat here and see if I can add a couple of little nuggets of gold or some value here somewhere. Yeah, that is so cool. Oh, I'm excited. So I would love to ask you this first up, please, if you could just give us, you know, from the horse's mouth, what is it that you do and why do you do it? Uh, people ask me why do I do what I do and I, the easiest answer for me is I, I can't not. Um, <laughs> I, I have, I know that's not very really helpful, but um, look, I, I started out in TV and film and acting uh, when I was back in 1994. Mm -hmm. And I was obsessed with uh, presenting and I was obsessed with, I always had in my head um, that I wanted to change the game when it came to presenting. And of course, in your 20s, that feels like a, a grandiose statement, doesn't it? And it also, if you look back on it, you go, well, it could also be confused for just ego when you're in your 20s. I'm going to change the game. Uh, and you don't really know what that means for it's possible. But I feel now uh, 20 uh, six years later, that I am changing the game of presenting. I've created an incredible career around it. I focus on, uh, with presenting, I focus on less the technical, and if the technical, think about the brain. So this is, this is the technical part. And I focus more on the, the feeling part of presenting, which is think of the heart brain. Okay. And... So for me, the space between the words or the pockets of space between the words is just as important as the actual words themselves. And when we speak from the heart brain and we are able to get into uh, a place of flow, or I like to call it a conduit for infinite wisdom, when we're, when we're not in this space here, uh, we're able to speak with words that match the frequency of our, of our greatness. And that just means they have more... Uh, weight behind them when we speak. Well, absolutely. That authenticity, that genuineness, if that's a word, I think it's it really helpful. And, it, you know, as I perused your Instagram, I knew very quickly that you're a, uh, a very strategic and you're a good um, practitioner of of doing good work and identifying those symptoms, as you call it, and, you know, remedying them rather quickly. And I think that's that's really uh, effective for, for people who are aspiring um, mm. to, you know, to take the stage at some point because it sometimes it's really difficult. Me personally, I'm wondering sometimes these people who make it to the main stages and do tours and they might be celebrities or, or actors or authors or whatever, it's kind of hard to know whether or not they're just tooting their own horn or actually trying to, to help us out, if you know what I mean. And so as I'm looking through your IG, I'm going, oh, this is actual like, stuff that I can use in here. So mm. that was um, it was really cool just from a personal point of view. Mm. I mean, that must feel amazing to be, you know, able to impact people's life on the daily or when you're doing your coaching or your retreats mm. um, by giving that. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, it is. Look, man, I, I focus on, and, and what I teach too is I, I focus on mastery. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm aware that the better I become, the less luck I, I need, the better I become, the more people I can help. Um, the more obsessed and disciplined I am with my craft, uh, the more I can change the game, you know, and which is by one person literally at a time. And what I see predominantly on stage or in, in, in on camera is people performing. So they've got this perception or fantasy of what a presenter looks like, yeah. you know, and it's normally um, uh, a caricature of themselves. Or, you know, it's, it's that their idea of, of TV, TV presenting or, you know, which the TV presenting is shoulders back, smile, uh, and even though you're not, you don't, might not be feeling it, and you um, colour and bring texture to your words, you know, the peaks and the troughs. Um, and your job is to open a show, uh, maybe do some interviews and, and, and 
create a bridge between commercials. I mean, that, that's, yeah, that, that's your job. Whereas entrepreneurs and people who are doing our stuff, um, we want the essence of us to be seen. So if, if I'm not feeling, if I'm not in a jovial or fun mood, you won't see me smiling on a, on a live or doing a video. Or if I'm, if I'm not feeling that way when I'm presenting a, a live, I don't have to pretend. And by not having to pretend, that means I can sit in that, in that um, space of authenticity. And from that space there, real language starts to arise. Um, do you want me to explain that a little bit there? That sounds fantastic. I'd love to know more. Yes, please. So I, 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 there's a methodology which aptly named the Eagleton Presenting Method. The first part of presenting for me is the what does authenticity mean? Um, we've all heard the advice, just be you, right? Yes. Now, what does that even mean? It's pretty freaking confusing. Just be you. And you go, it doesn't really help, actually, because if I knew how to do that, then would be all sweet. So just be you means for me, step one is no change of state. So whatever state you have woken up into, uh, up as today, whatever you're in in the afternoon, whatever is state you're in in this moment, what I do is teach people to just describe the state they're in. So I'm feeling a bit melancholic today, a little bit uh, deeper energy, um, and then own it. Go, okay, cool. That's, that's my state today. Then don't judge it to be right or wrong or positive or negative to the presenting. It's got nothing to do with it. It's just that is the state you're in today. So if you try and then if you judge it to go, okay, melancholic and a bit deeper energy today is not, not the state that I want to be in to present in, you will then have to pretend to not be in that state, right, which is removed authenticity immediately. So every state that you are in is the gift that you have that day or in that moment. So you can present the same topic every single day of the week and it will, you will deliver new language and find you. So you'll find new language and articulate it slightly different than the other day because you'll be in a slightly different state. Does that make sense? For sure. So in a deeper introspective mood, I'll be sitting in a heavier energy and my job is then, the step two is head to heart brain. Get out of here, get out of the head and get into the heart brain. Heart brain is, is, is just people say speaking from the heart. I like to call it the heart brain. And the heart brain, we have a frequency. And that frequency is the state that you'll be in today, right? So when... From whatever state you're in, I allow myself to choose the words, take my time to choose the words from that place. So I'll, I, I will choose the words that match that frequency. As if I'm in my heart brain, instead of going, what do I have to say here or what do I need to say is here, is what, do I, what do I really want to say here and choose the words from that place. Now, when you get good at this, you don't even have to be that good, actually. But when you're aware of this, you stop just choosing words to fill space and you start to choose words that match the frequency. I call this the frequency of your greatness because we're standing in our power. We're standing in our most authentic state. I'm not having to pretend to be somebody if you'd like me. But I'm still able to articulate my topic on point, I'm just using different words that will match where I'm at today. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because our presenting is most of what we're doing, if 95%, give or take, depending on what, uh, what Google thread you choose, uh, 95% of our communication is feeling-based. You know, it's the subconscious, mm -hmm. right? It's subconscious is the, is, is the feeling. But most presenters and people communicating are speaking from the head. So we're trying to get it right instead of, yeah. of, of communicating from that 95%, which is the feeling, which is why I always say um, there's just as much power in the space between the words and as sitting in those little human moments of, of silence than there is when, that, when we allow the pressure of um, a camera or people to make us fill that space with, 
with words that become superfluous. It's kind of like the video you did on on uh, how not to waffle. That's it, waffle. Waffles mm. is perfect. People waffle and go, yeah, it goes well in my head, and then I get on stage or on camera and I just start speaking about shit. And that's because of that external pressure of a camera or a live audience that they, they go, my job is public speaking, so I need to speak. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not, and I, I totally get, we can't call that sounds public feel, it's like, I get it. But <laughs> you know, the communication comes from the human moments. The human moments are the uncomfortable moments, the spaces, the space in between the words. And, and when we really allow ourselves to go, just choose the right words. What do you really want to say? And what are the words that are right to choose today? And you feel, and you feel that. And when you use those words, they have so much more weight behind them than the ones that I just call gap filler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like um, a thing that I've been learning recently is the um, moving out of that really fast-paced, almost automatic way of thinking and regurgitating information to appease a previous stimulus to then really like finding there's that little Hamish inside and he wants to talk, but there's all this noise. Oh, okay, we found the little Hamish. Now let's listen real quick and then we can bring that out. Um, that sort of uh, idea I've heard through um, Dr. Joe Dispenza when he talks about moving from, from beta to alpha brainwave states. Um, mm-hmm. Tom Bilyeu as well, I think, is another guy who talks about this kind of stuff. Is, uh, is, that, is that what you refer to if you want to think of it in a more scientific kind of way? Yeah, I just try to explain things. What I mean, what we're dealing with is something very intangible, right? Mm, I mean, Joe extremely. It, 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 yeah. it, Joe Dispenza has a way of talking about quantum quantum fields, but he makes he articulates it in a way you go, oh yeah, I get that. Yeah. And the same. I mean, if we're talking about if I'm talking about a frequency in the heart brain and speaking with mm. words that match that frequency. Mm-hmm. My job is to articulate it or create steps for people that mm-hmm. get them to that place. And you're talking about regurgitating, and regurgitating is recycling information. Mm-hmm. We're talking that's head. This is why people get they go up on stage and they try to remember everything, and um, and that's just regurgitating information. And that is what most presenting teachers do too it is i've learned how to present and now i'm passing that on what i've learned whereas my whole thing is i have to discover this so how i want to see it done or to feel i have to discover it myself and then create a process that enables other people to do that as well but we are we're speaking in a when i when i talk about Using words that match the frequency of our greatness, we're talking about something quite untangible. Mm. But it makes yeah. a huge difference. Uh, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I feel now I am starting to understand why it was exactly that I just knew that I wanted to connect. Mm. The information you're now telling me was definitely my heart brain picking up those frequencies coming from your direction. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, it just it, it, it's it's solid for me now in that manner. Um, I feel that that type of awareness is one of the most powerful things I've ever had occur to me. Whether it be uh, I'm discerning a a challenge coming up, and you just know, but there's nothing actually problematic. Just a second, and it'll probably you know come into you slap you in the face real quick, but. And simultaneously, some really good stuff where you just know, oh, today's going to be amazing. Or this next thing, yes, it's happening. Even though you're still potentially feeling super nervous and just almost frightened at different points because of an anticipation. Mm. Is this like also, yes, okay, we're talking about getting up on stage and presenting really authentically and uh, not on autopilot. But is this also like a really helpful tool just to be and have a really great human experience? Yeah, so yeah, 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 it is. I mean, the methodology, and it's not something I, I with my messages, I, I, I say I work with presenters, which is effectively what I do, because if I just go, I work with people, I mean, uh, it's not specific enough. I use the tool of presenting to help people shine their own greatness, right? So the methodology is really designed about 
you being able to understand you. It's 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 listening and sitting and and like on stage, I just don't have any fear anymore. I don't need to memorize anything. I know my points. I know that I'm an expert in my field. I put in the hours. I now just need if I'm sitting on the side of stage and no matter what mood I'm in, I literally have to go. I cannot screw this up. I need to. I just go out there and articulate what I need to articulate for this audience, keeping on point, but exploring the topic on stage with these people. What is the energy today? What are the words that, um, what are the words that I'm going to use to, to articulate my topic today to these people? And of course, then when we're meeting on an energetic level, it's not like, a, I'm going to say most, and it is most, most public speakers need the audience for energy. Mm-hmm. They feed off. It's like I need the live audience. And I mean, for me, that is all based in your ego. Mm-hmm. My job, the job of a presenter is really to connect with themselves on stage. You connect with yourself and your audience is there connecting with you and you end up in this as this, this, this one. I don't because what happens is this, if someone in the audience is distracted or, or, or not zoned in or not giving you the energy or, or that, then your whole presentation is screwed, right? Yes. It's like, oh, they're not meeting my expectations. They're not giving me the energy that I need, which, is, again, it's, it's a little bit needy. Um, instead of going, my, and the same on camera, my job is to connect with me. If I'm connected with me, and I'm listening to myself, if I know how I'm feeling, if I sit in that and explore the words that I want to use to articulate my topic today in this moment, it's going to have a whole different feel than what I brought tomorrow or the afternoon. So the key points that I've gotten so far, I mean, these are as much uh, a personal uh, in- interest of mine as, as much as I was really listening to your words, is, is what we really want to focus on uh, I suppose getting to know who we are, in, in not only in advance, but whilst we're on stage or presenting, being mm. ourselves as best as we can, y- using the uh, the insights that being in that that state of awareness brings us to present a really genuine article to to our to our audience. Is that, mm. is that is that okay? Cool. So I mean, because I put time and research into these kinds of topics, to me, I understand exactly what you're saying. Mm. How does one do all that kind of stuff, bud? How does one who's like, all right, I'm hearing what Andrew's saying. I understand that I got to do this, but I'm not really sure how to. Where do, where would you start? Hmm. Really nice question. It's really really nice question. It's having this. I'm. Just, I don't know why I'm thinking about this. Is is the word resistance and. I think, uh, God, where, where do you start? You have to have that curiosity. Where you have the curiosity and start asking the questions, then you start finding the answers, right? And then you have an appreciation for, uh, in everyday life, you start the appreciation of the problems and the solutions, the questions and the answers are all the same. Like when, when you discover a question that you need the answer for, you're, you, you've literally stepped into another space of awareness. Does that, does that make sense to you? As soon as you start hitting roadblocks or challenges or obstacles, you've hit a place where you are now searching for the discovery of the answer. Mm-hmm. So when people get stuck on, oh, life's tough, or I get, oh, why am I getting these challenges? Or um, For me, that's resistance. Because they're all they're, they're all equal the, they're equal the same. The question is the same as is equal to the answer. Because without the question, I would never have got the answer. Do you know what I mean? Like, why am I stuck? Great. What's the question? What's what's really the question you need to, to to ask to get the answer? You get the answer, you move through, and then you've you've got another one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Perpetual life, isn't it? And it's the same with uh, challenges or in business. There's, business is just constant problem solving. Mm-hmm. But for me now, the problems, are, the problems are just part of the solution. Like if without the problem, I'll never find the solution. Mm-hmm. 
And so wherever I'm finding that resistance to things, I'm just becoming more aware of letting resistance go. Okay, cool. I've had a problem. I've had a problem or a challenge. Great. What's the answer? What do I need? How do I get through the what's the what's the question I need to discover right now? So when you ask where do you start, I think the start is just starting to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Where are you curious? What do you what do you what would you like to understand more of? Or um, why are you stuck? Or why do you keep uh, having this pattern show up on your life? And as soon as you start discovering these things, you start to realize that life is actually pretty fair. Do you know what I mean? That's actually a lot more fear, uh, fair than I think most people would realize. As soon as you take the resistance out of resisting that pattern or that, or that stuckness or, or these things that hurt or don't make us feel good, when you appreciate them just as much as the answer that's coming, then you're able to constantly move forward and, and evolve. Does it make sense? Oh, yeah. I don't know if I answered your question. The the question question. (laughs) Well, I I, I think you definitely answered it. And I feel um, that when it comes to, you know, these these questions that don't necessarily have one strict answer, Mm. I I like the fact that you dropped in multiple facets to be looked at. So people have got options. And that's to me, that's kind of cool. You know, the, the... the comment about you've moved into a new space of awareness. I'm like, oh, damn, that's powerful. You know, because mm-hmm. your awareness builds um, your knowledge base. And with that knowledge base, you can you can do things that you currently don't have in your possession or the ability to do. And mm-hmm. to me, that is I'm waking up, up from this passive life that I've been living and I now have a chance to live it as I'd like. I have, I have the chance to have choice. And um, as I'm like teaching the kids day to day, different things mm. that I'd like them to know and that they want to know about a lot of the time, they didn't realize that they could actually choose to be good at it because mm. they just naturally weren't already on, on point at whatever task it could be reading, it could be writing, it could be you know, mm. a, a school topic. And I just thought, Oh my God, that's the world we live in. It really hasn't, sort of instill that understanding that we can choose to be whatever we want. And um, I got really excited for that pin drop moment for them. (laughs) You know, a couple of things I've discovered in the last three years that have made a massive difference to the speed of my my growth. Um, One is when I pursue mastery, I've made a decision to be the best that I can be in my field. And I also trust that if I'm being the best in my field doing it my way, then I'm going to be the best in my field in the world. Does that, does that make sense? Because I'm playing at the vanguard. I'm not copying anybody. So um, I'm, I'm making this up as I go, mm-hmm. breaking new boundaries. So it's now because of chosen mastery, I know that I will put up with the hard times. Like I'll work through them. It's like, you know, when I gave up acting, it was because I had to face the truth of I'm actually not willing to go to Los Angeles and sleep on a couch for I don't know how long. Like I'm not willing to do it. And that was literally was like, well, okay, so you're not going to play big time. You're going to be doing soap and dramas in New Zealand, which was what I was doing. But that wasn't enough anymore. So it was either stay there and do that or give up. Does that make sense? Because I wasn't prepared to do the the other stuff. Whereas in presenting, I'm obsessed. There's nothing that can stand in my way because I will just keep going and finding the answers and pushing and dealing with it. And I'm willing to suffer the more challenging times to get to the point of mastery. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And the other one was starting to realize that if I kept making decisions and, and, and taking actions as I have always done, I'm going to keep getting the same day and the same experiences. And what my whole thing was in the last three years is I want amazing experiences. These are the experiences. Like uh, I want Retreats in Mexico, Portugal, Bali. I want to travel to London, New York to do events every year. And I went, okay, well, how do I do this? 
And I just went like, I've got to stop thinking like Andrew today and yesterday. I have to start thinking as a greater version of myself. Mm -hmm. So I just created this phrase of every time I came, I came to make a decision or take an action, I asked myself, in one year's time from today, when I'm already in my greatness, how would I act or react right now? And, of course, that broke all my old patterns. So, for example, my first big retreat, which is I, I basically hired a small village on the top of a mountain in Portugal, and the layout of that was really expensive. Do you know what I mean? I, I trusted that I've got the goods to teach. I, I trust that. I know that. But, of course, when I went to pay all those thousands of euros, I went, what if no one comes? Uh, what if I lose all this money? What if I look, what if I look silly? And that was then change that and go, yeah, but in one year's time from today when you're already in your greatness, would it be sold out? Yeah, it'd be sold out. Would people fly from wherever the world? Yes, of course they would. What would Andrew in one year's time and his greatness do? He would pay the deposit back himself. Uh, he would look under every single stone to fill that space and work it out as he went. And, man, in one year's time, I sold out Portugal. And then I went, okay, let's do this with London. Let's do this with New York. Let's do this with Los Angeles. Let's do this with Bali. Let's do this with Mexico. And it just became this, you start to get this, oh, my God, nothing can stop me. I'm doing all this stuff. And you're, you're kind of pinching yourself going, I'm pulling this off. Every time I'm doing this, I'm, 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 it's, it's happening. You're going because you start thinking from a different version of yourself, almost as if there is a parallel universe, if you can entertain that idea. There's a parallel universe, and alongside you in a parallel universe, there is a greatest there is a greater version of yourself that all this is already happening. And you just simply need to be making decisions and taking actions like he would be. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that, then the experiences because you're taking those actions and making those decisions, it's kind of like the given you're going to start getting those experiences. Does, does that make sense? Of course. When you start to, when you, when you realize, oh my God, I don't even need luck anymore. This isn't about luck. This is just making those decisions. It doesn't matter how much fear I'm feeling right now, but old Andrew can't make the decisions for me anymore. It has to be constantly from that version of myself. And as long as I'm doing that, then lo and behold, you start to you start la almost laughing and going, oh, my God, how did I just create this freaking amazing life? Because mm -hmm. I'm not basing uh, – Joe Dispenza does this really well. It really explains it is when we're making decisions and taking actions, we're basing those on feelings, right, what's been brought up or our past experiences, past experiences. So it's conditioned into us. So if you're making our decisions on our future, on our past, you're going to get the past and the future. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I just used that one line to break that pattern every single day. As, as often as I could use it, it breaks that pattern that I would of getting yesterday, tomorrow. Instead of getting tomorrow, is like, holy shit, how did that just happen? Yep, that's awesome. And I'm just picturing you, you know, at the place metaphorically where you're about to drop the dollars and the, or the euros. And I put myself in that, that physical space, you know, mentally. Mm. And I was just like, wow, how extraordinary is that feeling? Mm. And I'm, I'm really like, I've had to practice that kind of mental positioning and I feel everyone can do it. I don't think that anyone's you know um too dumb or stupid it just, it's, a, it's a choice to be like that and i think that's a choice to to do the kinds of things that you've done as well and i mean mm. i didn't know about the retreats over in those countries overseas um definitely i knew about bali i mean that is a really cool um feat and i mean the european countries that don't have english language as their primary or south american countries i mean that's even that's even more of, of a you know a tremendous feat and so congratulations to you for that definitely first and foremost but secondly going back to the the mental positioning when people do that what what you've done mentally speaking 
what is what is your experience that you're feeling and, and going through um, when you're seeing yourself in that parallel universe? What does that feel like? So, um, first of all, that the, the the people that would come to the retreats would fly in from all corners of the world. Wow, so like South Africa, America, Netherlands, London, Australia, and so you're sitting in these retreat spaces which are beautiful mm-hmm. and you've got um, a van or a taxi picking these people up from the airport they're turning up with their bags you know you're meeting them from South Africa America and you're just going this is nuts mm-hmm. they've flown from one side of the world to the other trusting me that I'm going to deliver them a week-long experience that change their life and of course, then again, you've got to go into that in one year's time from today when I'm already in my greatness. I will deliver that experience for them. Mm-hmm. That, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. So, yeah, this was the pinch me moment again because you start going, where did these people come from? Like, how did they find out about me? It was just, it just happened. You make the decision and then the rest starts falling into place. Because I, I don't, I, I didn't know these people beforehand. They just, they, they just come out of the woodworks and they message you and go, "Hey, I hear you've got a retreat on." Like, how, how did you hear about me from um, Cape Town or yeah. Johannesburg? You know, there, there was two ladies from a bank in Johannesburg, and I would go, "Where did you come from? How did, you, how did you discover this? A guy from the Netherlands?" And it just keeps happening. You put it out there, and I, I, man, I. I, I I don't know the nitty gritties of frequency or vibrations or you know all this stuff. I mean, that's I, I, I like to think of things in just layman's terms. Is I you, you make it happen, you trust, you you remove that resistance of maybe no one will turn up. You let go of that resistance, and it's replaced with a with a with a bit of vibe and more opportunity. So, how much I I didn't answer your second part of that question. Well. I'm thinking that's a really cool place for other people to get to, right? So what did it feel like when the ladies from Cape Town messaged you and you're like, wow, this is happening? What What is that, you know, that visceral experience? Honestly, I, like last year was an absolute trip, like an absolute trip. And I just keep making decisions I keep going to this, if I want to play in the top 5% of the world, I need to be making the decisions that the top 5% of the world people make. Mm-hmm. So, don't know what's happening there. I'm sorry, right? <laughs> um, it was just constant, constant pinch me, just constantly pinching yourself, going, what, how am I making this happen? Like you're hopping on the next plane, you're hopping in the you know, in the next airport, you're staying in another hotel. I remember, sorry, I did a retreat in Austria too, and oh. you're just going from crazy situation to crazy situation. Going, I'm driving this. I'm making this happen. Mm-hmm. This whole thing, I am driving this only by my thought, by my decision making and my thought, and my constantly just making these little micro decisions based on no fear just of what would happen though if I did do this and I did it well. So internally there's there's a commitment and you're, you're really putting yourself into the place that you want to move, you know, physically and 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 keeping fear away long enough so that you, you can do the necessary steps? Yeah, yes. So the, the, the fear is always... I think the fear is always zero. It's like a little companion, yeah. really, and mm-hmm. you, just, you just learn to go, not listen to it, mm-hmm. and, and you always go, you know, what's on the other side of that? Um, then I start. To, then, of course, is, is the you can't make up the preparation. You can't make up the stuff that you have to do. You still got to do the work. Like, what am I going to teach in these five days? Um, you know, how do I structure this? Where do I? Like the one in Portugal was none of the things that we actually needed were there because it was more of a uh, a yoga retreat village, but I wasn't doing yoga. Mm. So, But the location was insane. So I had to start sourcing bits and pieces from all over Portugal mm. and getting them sent in. So it was, and what am I going to teach for five days? 
and the flow of it and how good how good do I need to be by the time this happens. That was actually a, a really nice thing that I started doing was I used every opportunity that I was working towards is going, who is the Andrew that by June 27 turns up at this place and hits the ball out of the park? Like, who do I need to become? Mm-hmm. What knowledge do I need? How bone deep do I need to have uh, that certainty within myself? Like, who turns, who's turning up on that date? Because the current, like, if it was March, the current, I'd go, the current Andrew is not capable of that yet. Otherwise, I'd have it. So who do I need to grow into so by the time I step into that space on June 27 and all these people flying from the world, I'm ready and I'm a different version of myself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. What knowledge do I need? How do I use my voice? Um, uh, There was just lots of little things like what are the parts of me that are still dragging um, the little, the, 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 the old Andrew? kicking and screaming, what, what parts do I need to cut the shackles and the chains off because I want to be this person by the time I get there. So one, one I suppose, mental drama, I've found people when I was working in the gym as a trainer, I've found people would do similar things as you've just said in sense of I've identified things that I need to get rid of. But in, instead of doing that, what they do is, is they, they sort of guilt and shame themselves and identify Mm -hmm. with that physical challenge or that eating discipline, lack of discipline challenge. And so Mm -hmm. what does it, what does it take to move from the, I'm going to judge myself for a tool. uh, What does it take to get to that space as opposed to I'm going to hurt myself through negative emotional feedbacks? Yeah, really great, really good question. Um, Okay. So, You've got to keep acting, reacting as the greatest version of yourself. So you go, well, do I need to keep dragging this with me? And, you know, I, it's, it's, if I can, I'm trying to think of a relevant example of, like, health is really important to me. Mm-hmm. So I, I go to the gym four to five times a week. It's a non-negotiable. I eat really good food, especially as the older I'm getting, I don't have the energy that I did in my 20s, so I need to look after myself even more. So if I don't eat well, I won't be able to get that extra 5 to 10% out of myself. So last year when it was all the travel, it was constantly going, when I was landing after a 12-hour flight, I would go have a, I'd go find a place with a sauna, have a sauna and gym. And sometimes in the gym, it was, I, I felt like I was going to pass out. Because you just your body's going. What are you doing? What are you thinking? But the next day, it had. Re- it, I could feel that it made the big difference. And so, if I was, if I wasn't as disciplined, there's a hundred and one reasons why I, I I could give myself to not go to the gym and find a sauna after a twelve hour flight. You know what I mean? There's a hundred and one reasons to go. No. Nah, Give yourself a break. You've just had a big flight. Don't worry about it. Do it tomorrow. Mm. But by me doing that, I've already set the bar of someone who's more world class. Mm. So you mean going, okay, so if I want to play, if I'm world class, what does world class do? Mirror that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? What does he do? What does he eat? Like I don't, I have a hard set rule of I don't drink five days before a retreat or an event. Mm Would would I really know the difference uh, if I if it was three days? I don't know, but I uh, if it's five days, my head's so clear. I'm on, and I just feel like I've given myself every opportunity that mm-hmm. is required. And for me, that's just again, what is what does world class look like for me? And what are other what are other people do, and what am I prepared to do more than them? Because that's what separates you, isn't it? It's just like, what am I prepared to do? Um, I'm prepared to go to the, I'm prepared to just do that little extra piece. I, as, it's funny, I had a client the other day who um, didn't want to turn up for a call because they were moving house. And I laughed. 
And she's then they were like, what are, why are you laughing? I was like, because what kind of excuse is that? You're moving house. I mean, what, what do you want me to say? I mean, you, 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 you hire me because I, you said you want to be world class. And now you're telling me you can't make a, you can't make a training because you're moving and you want my sympathies. But the reality is that like last year when I never miss a training call. And so if I'm flying from Europe, to Australia, I will get a flight that enables me to stop halfway and get off the plane, do my call, even if that means staying the night, but hire a hotel nearby, do my call after a 12 to 14 hour flight, do my call, and then either rest or get back on a plane and move on. Because that's what I'm prepared to do. And it creates, again, the experiences and the opportunities start to flow because you, that's the level that you're prepared to put in. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And it just separates you immediately from those people who go, no, I'll skip this one or I won't go to the gym today or I won't do this. And you go, okay, but these are the, this is the discipline that you need to have as a non-negotiable. And if it's a non-negotiable and you live it, as soon as you hear your mind negotiating, you stop and you go, did you just try and negotiate with yourself? Right. <laughs> I'm going now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Okay, <laughs> so to get to finish up for today, I would I would love it if you could leave us with one final piece of wisdom. Maybe your top five words insights because we've gone through so much content that is definitely not a first year apprentice type material but also some which is Mm -hmm. and um i'd love you to if you could bring it all together with a final five a final five so what like five tips or five yep up to you up to you when you are becoming here's a tip this is is something I, i use Months and months out. As you grow, there'll be a word that you need to become. I mean, I'm covered in tattoos, words all over my body. These were words that I wanted to grow into. I I realize now uh, that I don't need to tattoo them on myself. I can just use post-it notes. So this is, you know, just some gear I've improved on. Um, So, for example, if I need, uh, I'll write a word. It might be embody. And I become that word. And then when I've become that word, I can take the post-it note off the ball and, I can, and I'll choose another word. Embody, uh, bone deep, um, truth, whatever that word is that I need to become, and then I absolutely obsess over it. And I'm in my embodying this. When I'm speaking on stage, is that is are these words absolutely embodied? So when I speak, there's certainty. Because this is what people are buying, right? Certainty. Um, That's one tip. This is a lot of information, Henry. This is, this is a lot of information, this last part. Another tool, and this is a mentor taught me this, is, is a phrase called it's like me. It's like me too. So a little bit like the in one year's time from today when I'm already in my greatness, how do I act, react right now? It's like me too is what are the things for you to have what you want? that you have to consistently and insistently do and be, that you will get it. So it is like me to embody what it is that I'm saying. It is like me to have certainty. Uh, it is like me to practice my voice at least 30 minutes a week. It is like me to never negotiate about the gym. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So it would be like me to do X, Y, and Z. So when you go to do something that's against and you go, yeah, but is that going to get me to my end experience? No, it's like me to get voice lessons. It's like me to um, do five sales calls per week. It is like me to, do you know what I mean? Do you know I mean? It's like me to eat really freaking healthy. It's like me to say no to ice cream. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a lot of information. It's a lot of information right there. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today, Andrew. Um, I'm really pleased that we managed to, um, connect um, from a personal point of view. I'm really happy that there are people out you like there, or out there like you, doing your absolute greatest to make the world a better place. 
And if there's one thing that I've learned um, from my own personal experience as well as my observations of what's going on right now is that life is actually really incredible and the news doesn't know everything. <laughs> the news? <laughs> the news doesn't know everything. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really happy to see guys like yourself and, and the girls I talk to as well are, are really stepping forward and, and bringing uh, the vibe and the, uh, the lives of, of humanity up a notch each and every day. So thank you so much for your time today and for all that you do. My pleasure, thank you, thank you.